delighted to be here actually for the second time in a workshop organized by uh, Africa 21 with journalists. I think that is very important because um, uh, to me, the media has a super important role to play in climate change um, perception and how to respond to climate change. Uh, I would say that even that the media somehow can shape the public discourse on climate change and how to respond to it. And this role of uh, media on climate change perception has been assessed uh, for the first time in the IPCC 6 assessment uh, cycle in the working group three, the one about mitigation. I was not involved in this working group. So the conclusion is that uh, the major coverage of climate change has grown steadily since uh, the 80s. However, increasing media coverage does not always lead to more accurate coverage of climate change mitigation, as it can also spur diffusion of misinformation. They have also assessed uh, a common challenge in reporting climate change around the world. But they mentioned also that uh, these challenges are acute in developing countries due to um, lower capacities and lack of uh, or limited journalist training in complex climate subjects and limited access to climate related resources. They have also, I'm, I'm glad they have also quoted the Ugandan journalist, Patrick Luganda, who said that uh, I'm exactly those most at risk from the impact of climate change typically have uh, access to the least information about it through mass media. So I believe that uh, this workshop has contributed to overcome some of these challenges. And regarding uh, impact of climate change on water, I believe that on Monday, my IPCC colleague, colleague Aditi uh, presented extensively uh, IPC related results from working group two. What I want just to recall here, a few things about that, is that about uh, only 4% of fresh water is available and accessible for the functioning of um, uh, ecosystems and the needs of human societies. And with strong disparities according to region and, and seasons. And also, we should note that in a warming climate, change in the water cycle are among the first consequences affecting uh, ecosystems and, and human societies. If we have assessed that uh, continental precipitation has increased since the uh, 50s in general, uh, they are marked contrasts according to region and season. For example, some regions in Africa, such as Southern Africa and North Africa, are experiencing uh, drying conditions. And this will continue based on climate change projections. And they will get more acute as long as the, 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 the warming increased. In other regions, such as West African monsoon region or East Africa, we know that the season are perturbed. We have uh, delayed onsen monsoon season or delayed rainy season. Also, um, dryness within the rainy season. And one thing I think is important also to note is climate change is also can also be superimposed to natural variability. And it can either increase the manifestation of this natural variability or go in another direction. It is, for example, the case of the multi drought uh, that is being experienced in some part of East Africa, particularly the Horn of Africa.
another thing I think uh, was to note is that human caused climate change is making extreme events more frequent and severe, especially water related extremes. We know that many regions have seen heavier and more intense rainfall events, which can foil floods. I would like also to record here that uh, floods as, as a uh, disaster scales depend not only on the, on the climate event, but also on the vulnerability and the exposure of uh, assets and, and, and people. Many parts of uh, Africa have already experienced heavy rainfall, but I should say that due to lack of uh, data accessible to to for uh, trend analysis since the um, uh, sorry six um, not seventy six. Um, uh, the 50s, it was not uh, possible to, 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 to provide a clear tendency of, uh, of increase of heavy precipitation. But people who, who live on the ground know that there is increase of heavy precipitation. But more importantly, from 1.5 the census of increase of global uh, the um, the period before the industrial revolution there will be an increase of heavy precipitation almost in every region of Africa. We note also that in the tropics, including in Southeast Africa, the strongest tropical cyclones have become more intense. And the tendency will continue also uh, for the projections. Regarding IPCC report, in general, I would say that there is a wealth of information in the IPCC report. We have, uh, for each cycle, we have three working groups and we have special reports for this cycle. We had three special reports, the one on 1.5 degrees Celsius, the reports on land and the reports of ocean and cryosphere. And each, for example, working group reports, it's about uh, 3,000 pages. And from these 3,000 pages with different um, uh, chapter within a working group, we come up with a technical uh, summary, which is more intended to other climate scientists or for, um, for academia. But we, from this, we can build also what we call the SPM. I believe that many of you have heard about the SPM, the Summary for Policymakers, the one which is um, uh, approved line by line, figure by figure, and it's about 20 to 30 pages to have the essence of each working group. And this one normally is uh, written in a clear language, language and uh, jargon free that could be understood by policymakers, by journalists, and by the public in general. By the way, all the two, I would like to say that uh, all the three working group reports have been released and we are um, finalizing what we call the synthesis report, which will be uh, published uh, in March 20 this year. And this report, it uh, intended to summarize the two working group reports and the special report of the cycle. 
in 20 or 30 page, no more. So there is a wealth of information. And to journalists, I would like to say that there is an important resource in each of the working group and special reports, which are the frequently asked questions. These are written in um, concise, concise or and simple language with explanation of the main conclusion of each chapter of the working groups or special report. Another novelty, well, that is a novelty actually, is the summary for all, uh, which is a jargon-free and concise and clear language uh, report published two months ago for the working group one. I hope also that this kind of report would be available for the other working groups and also would be the norm for the next assessment cycle uh, seven. I would like to finish with that and I'm here for uh, questions or more interactions. Thanks. <laughs>